This is the websites.ca podcast where we help Canadian small businesses build and maintain an effective website and online presence. Hello, everybody. Welcome back again. Sean Corbett here, websites.ca marketing. This month's topic is about positioning yourself both online and offline as an expert so you can get more leads and obviously make more profit. I'm joined by business coach Nina Hirschberger to talk about creating lead generation books. Well, thank you, Sean. It is my pleasure. I always like to talk to business owners. So the fact that I, I'm imagining all those business owners out there I'm giving you a high five because, you know, it's a lonely place to be as a business owner. So anyway, thank you. And one warning, though, Sean, Mm -hmm. I have two dogs in my office right now. So if you hear barking, if you hear whining, just know it's one of them. Perfect. Yeah. So what we'll do, I mean, before we actually get into specifics, Nina, could you tell us a little bit about your background and how you originally came to help so many small and medium-sized business owners, you know, establish themselves as market experts? Yeah, that's, that's a fun, (laughs) it's a fun question because I don't remember this, but my parents tell me that when I was little, I wanted to go door to door selling rusty bobby pins. Now, as you can imagine, they said, no. But from very early on, I did go door to door. I started, and it was, you know, before we have social media, but I would sell Christmas card boxes door to door. Uh, I sold Avon door to door. Um, I had, I was the very first paper route girl in my community. And I did that seven days a week. So from very early on, I kind of had the entrepreneurial bent, um, but I did go to college. I did get a marketing degree, uh, but what I will say to you is I really did not learn and understand marketing uh, until I met a guy by the name of Dan Kennedy. And so um, that's a little bit of my background. Nice. And then so after you after you kind of got learned the Kennedy system, you hit on this concept of doing a sort of a... Um, expert positioning books for small business owners? Did you did you start with one for yourself and then realize how powerful it was? Or was that the thrust from the beginning? That's a good question. No, I did not start there. So I met Dan in 1996. Uh, at the time, I was, a direct, um, I was a director of a direct mail operation where we printed and mailed 30 million pieces a month. And um, And I did not, even though I understood uh, some kind of marketing, I did not understand there was two kinds of marketing. Mm -hmm. And when I met Dan, and that's a totally different story, but when I met him, my eyes were open. And so there is direct response marketing and there is uh, institutional marketing. Institutional marketing, and so sorry about the barking. Uh, Institutional marketing is the kind of marketing that the big companies do. Uh, you and I and the, the listeners, we need to, when we spend a dollar of marketing, it needs to have a measurable return on that dollar. So in 1996, I never thought about a, 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 a book. I simply thought about, okay, this is a whole new world. How in the world do I learn this? And uh, I ended up with a client and I was doing some direct mail for them. I was still working in corporate America but I was doing some direct mail for them. And Dan, if anybody in the listening audience knows who Dan is, uh, years ago, he brought to market a a thing called magnetic marketing. And it talks about this whole thing and he gave examples. So I used those concepts to write um, a a direct mail piece for a client. And at the back of the book or the front of the book, I don't even remember now, he had some coupons in there. And it was to to evaluate what it was you did. So I exercised one of those. It wasn't Dan I got to talk to. Uh, It was a guy by the name of Rodney Tolson. And I said, so Rodney, what do you think? I mean, is this this good? And he said, Nina, I don't know. But I will tell you that if you don't do anything, nothing will work. And that was a very important lesson. But it wasn't until... 2010, so that's 12 years ago, that, and I had heard Dan say over and over and over, you need to be a published author. You need to be a published author. So finally in 2010, I wrote my first book, 
if you go on to Amazon, I should have counted before we got on here. I think I've got like nine books up there now. <laughs> uh, and I've done hundreds of books. If we were on video, you would see my walls in my office plastered with the book covers of, of books I've done for clients. Um, but it was, and he said over and over and over, becoming a published author gives you that authority and that credibility that nobody else will have. And Sean, it doesn't matter if you're a painter. It doesn't matter if you fix cars. It doesn't matter if you're a florist. I don't care what industry you're in, writing a book is incredibly important to a for your authority status. Well, I think, and that leads perfectly into my, my first big question so we can address the elephant in the room for all the listeners. Uh, I always ask our guests, Sina, what is the biggest misconception about your service? And I'm just guessing, in your case, being a writer myself, I'm guessing that a lot of your clients are going to say something like they can't write or maybe that no one reads anymore or whatever. But what would you say is the biggest misconception about creating this book? You know, the, the, let me start with the, you know, they don't read anymore. And there is really truth to that. I will say, though, um, sitting in my monitor right here, uh, I just yesterday worked on a, um, a sales piece for a client that is a multi-million dollar sales piece. It's five pages. People will read if what they are reading is not boring and it's interesting to them. But I will say, and you've got firsthand knowledge of this, Sean, uh, in the last number of years, I've created very small books, which I call pocket books. They're a four inch by seven inch, maybe about four or 5,000 words. Uh, really easy to do, but you're right. Most people say, I can't write. So here's, um, here's my suggestion to that. Get out your phone that has a tape recorder on or buy a little tape recorder on Amazon. Uh, figure out the, what your topic is going to be. So you just make it simple. One topic. Um, let me give you an example. Um, here I'm in front of me. I'm looking at one of the books that I put for a chiropractor. And his book title was, Yes, You Can Live a Pain-Free Life. So whatever your subject is, come up with about 10 chapter titles. And then when you're out walking or, or sitting in your backyard or whatever, take one of those chapters and write copy. I'm sorry, speak on your recorder and just talk. Yeah. Then that transcribe. Give it to an editor if you want, or edit yourself, and you'd be surprised how quickly you really can produce a book. Yeah, I mean, I think going back to my days working in brick and mortar and stuff, every business owner, if you get them in isolation, they'll tell you either, uh, you know, I don't know what to say, or it's all the same, or my work applies to everybody or whatever. But if you watch them deal with clients, even if it's a mechanic who's not even th who doesn't even think he's doing a sales process, they all seem to have a wrap, a story, a close, an ask. Like they do it uh, um, subconsciously, and it's just about realizing, oh, that all that stuff would actually make for very interesting. It might be not interesting to you because you've done it a million times, the business owner, right? But it actually turns out in your experience, you found it's very interesting to their clients. Now that's a very very wise comment, Sean, because. Uh, stick that tape recorder in your pocket or record that telephone conversation because when you're on, when you know you're in the zone, that's the best content possible is and so just capture it. Yeah, that, that's that's a perfect way to begin the book. I had one client who um, was a lawyer to um, women only. She, he was a divorce lawyer for women only in his state. And he did a pre presentation. They recorded the presentation, got it transcribed, and guess what? It became their book. Uh, okay. That's perfect. So now we have, so we have a pocket book. Uh, in a lot, like you said, it's totally fine. We give the audience permission to use a transcription, right? You don't, you don't have to write the next great novel. It just has to be applicable information. So we've got this book. Now, 
uh, and maybe you can use some stories from, from some of your clients. How do business owners take this book and use it to get leads, use it to have people come to them and be seen as their industry expert? Yeah, no, great question. So let me, give me an example of somebody who might be listening. Let's go to a real example. Okay. Give me give me an industry, Sean. Let's take a uh, house painter. House painter, okay. So everybody, you know, what, what is somebody, if somebody needs a, their house painted, what happens? They call three different painters, yeah. they have them come out and they get an estimate, right? Yeah. And if you don't have anything else to compare, what do you probably do? You pick the lowest. Yeah. Uh, so, but what if a painter showed up? Um, and, and, it, and first of all, it's all about the experience and being memorable. So, what if they showed up and said, "By the way, I just wrote a book on you know choosing the right paint." or the colors for 2023, yeah. or whatever it is, do you think he would say, or she would at least stand out from the crowd? Because, oh my goodness, this guy know what he's talking about. Let me give you a real live example. Several years ago, um, we had an, a house and we were getting our um, kitchen cupboards painted. And so I, I hired a painter just like that. I had no other way. I don't know. I don't even remember how I found it. I think I went to the paint store and picked out business cards or something anyway. So um, so I went and bought paint. I think I went to a Lowe's or a Menards or someplace down here in the United States. And I got paint and I gave him the paint. It was awful paint, you know, but he never told me that I should get XYZ kind of paint. For, for getting the best results. Mm -hmm. So having a book, part of it is just having, you know, being able to um, educate, um, educate your people, you know, here's the, here's the 10 questions you need to ask before hiring a painter. I, I also want to, I also want to put a finer point on that too, because even if he would have said, maybe not to you, right? Because you're a little bit more aware, but I'll bet you for most of his clients in our hypothetical or in our example here, if, if um, he would have said, well, you know, that's not really the best paint choice and that's not the best color choice, blah, blah, blah. A lot of the clients might've just went, yeah, what everybody just please do what I asked you to do. But as soon as he puts a book in your hand, as opposed to say, just a business card or nothing, right? Like the other two guys are probably gonna show up with nothing, like you said, but as soon as he puts a book in your hand, isn't it true that there's a bit of a subconscious change and now perhaps his, his um, advice might take on a little bit more gravity? Absolutely. You now the authority. I'm going to give you another example. Yeah. So, you know, you don't have to write a book. I've written many, many books that I've licensed the content to. One of them is in the real estate market. I have a book, what every person needs to know about buying a house, what every person needs to know about selling their house. And so I did, I, I licensed those books to a, a local realtor here in the United States. Uh, we got them printed. I give it to him in the Word document. So if he wants to make some changes, he can, but we format, we get it all printed. So he had his book, custom, you know, printed cover. I mean, it was really cool. And so, by the way, this dog's name is Oreo. <laughs> what Oreo wants, but he certainly doesn't want to listen to me talk. So anyway, back to my story. So uh, he had just gotten the book, just gotten the book. And if you know anything about realtors, again, just like painters, if you're going to sell your house, you go out and you get three realtors who's going to come through and give you an estimate of what you can sell for, right? And yeah. that's how it works. Yeah. So he was the same thing. He comes and he, and he you know, for the listing um, appointment and... Um, at the end, he said, oh, by the way, I wrote the book. The, he, the, he tells me the story of how he could see the guy's face literally change. Hmm. And, he, and he signed right then. He hadn't even read the book. It was the fact that he had a book. So don't, you know, you talk about, well, I don't know how to write. No, it's not going to be the best selling. <laughs> it's just the fact you got one. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I do want to talk briefly about the process and timelines and stuff like that, just to give our listeners an idea. But before we move on, there was, there was a topic that we're kind of um, flirting with, but we haven't really examined yet in the call. And that's, you know, you've given a couple examples and you said they call three painters, they call three of this person or talk to three of that person. But what we didn't talk about is, you know, in the online realm, how did they come to find that person's phone number? How did they come to get the estimate from them in the first place? Probably from Googling, right? And, That's true. Uh, right? And so how does a book play into, let's call it the online discovery process that so many of our, for our listeners, their best customers tend to have found them through this online discovery process. So how does the expert book play into that? You know, I have a, a terminology that I call niche domination. So you need to be seen everywhere. And the moment you write a book and assuming it's on Amazon, again, if you if you search my name, you're gonna see me everywhere. So yes, the first thing people will do is they will probably Google you. So you want to be seen as an expert. You wanna be seen in many different places. Um, so having the book on Amazon generally will do that. On your website, because when I work with clients, I mean, I'll give them the, you know, the final PDF. I'll even do a flip book for them. So you have a copy of the cover of your book right there on right front and center on your website. And you can have, you know, download my new book. So again, as they're Googling, as they're searching, they're saying, whoa, this painter, this realtor, this carpet cleaner, whatever. Wow, he wrote the book on that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Whether they download it or not, there is still a psychological thing with that. Yeah, it's almost like a badge. That's right. So getting into the process, um, I'm trying to imagine some of the top questions people have. And of course, you can fill in more details if I'm not asking the right questions. But you know, one of the, I guess one of them that comes to mind is like roughly how long does this process take from start to finish to put together one of these books? Yeah, that's a good question. So if you go on Amazon, you're going to see one of my books up there is 90 day author. Okay. Um, and there's different ways you can become an author. You can license the content. I, I do those. You can write it yourself. So the time frame, well, you know, how long is it going to take you to do it? Or you can hire a ghost writer, somebody like me who will interview you, who will take whatever content you have and will write it for you. I say I can pretty well get a book done within 90 days. That's why my book is 90 day author. And that's from start to finish. That is content that is formatted, that is custom book cover. And as long as it's a certain uh, physical size, that's even on Amazon. Nice. And then also I assume they get some printed copies as well. That's like say put, put in the office and hand out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you always want to have printed copies. I mean, having it, you know, so many people thought, well, they're going to save money and they're going to Eve, I am so sorry. I don't know what to do about this little dog. <laughs> <laughs> I think of it like, you know, we, if we were a show, we'd have like an audience or a laugh track or whatever. And I really prefer the dog sounds in the background to the audience sounds. So, no, I mean, he wants out, but I can't just let him out because he has to be on a chain and I don't have a chain here. But anyway. So what was your question? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's okay. It was just about the process. I mean, I think I think that we've got people through the mental hurdle of that, you know, what exactly, what kind of book are we talking about, right? It's not going to break their spirit to do it. It's clearly that they're a subject matter expert. So it makes sense to put their, their pitch or their speech or whatever they do on a daily basis into book format. Um, let's just say that no matter what you and I say, Nina, they're probably, most listeners are probably not going to take the next step and do it themselves. So if they're not going to do it themselves and they're looking for just a little bit of help, guidance in this process, how, how would they go about hiring someone like yourself, getting in touch with you and getting the whole thing started? You know, the beauty about uh, hiring somebody like me to write your book is I am a marketer. I am not just a book writer, editor, because I'm always mentally thinking, how are you going to make money with this book? There has to be call to actions. There has to be, you know, uh, actually, Sean, you know that oftentimes what I'll do is I'll take a snippets of the recording and I'll put a QR code in those books. So now, not only are they reading, but they're listening and hearing you as well. 
Yeah. So the process, if you hire somebody like me, and if we and if we do just those small pocketbooks like I talked about, um, 90 days, start to finish, it's a $3,500. That's what it costs. And that is, a, if you've ever priced any kind of book writers, they're usually, I know one book writer that's $150,000. Um, but I tried to keep it very affordable for local businesses to be able to get it and get it done. That's awesome. And so if someone who's listening does want to start that process with you, what's the next best step? Do they visit your website or, you know, how, how do they get started? Yeah, you can go to my website. It is megabucksmarketing.com. And you're going to see on there that I do charge $25,000 for those to run bigger books but if you email me at nina n-i-n-a at megabucksmarketing.com and you mention this podcast then you will get that better price of $3,500 to write one of these smaller books perfect and we'll put those links in the show notes nina last word goes to you anything that you wanted to sort of fill in the color on on this topic yeah, you know, this is a this is another gift to you. Um, let me see, where is it? Oh, here it is. So one of the books, my latest book that I wrote is How to Double Your Profits Without Spending a Dime. Uh, that's really important for any business owner, any entrepreneur, any local business who's struggling trying to figure out how they're going to make, you know, that bottom line number is the most important number. Mm. So um, I, it's my gift to you to give you a free copy of that book. If you text the word book to this phone number, you're going to get a free copy of that book. And you're going to find that I can easily usually find it at least 50% increase in profits without spending a dime. And the book talks all about how that works. So the number to text the word book to is 317-886-1000. Eight eight. That is not a live phone number. You're not going to get me on the phone. You're going to go into my email list. Full disclosure, you can unsubscribe. But it's, it's my gift to you to be able to give you that book. It is on Amazon. If you want to buy it, you can do that as well. Perfect. So one more time, that's text book B O O K to three one seven eight eight six one zero eight eight. And I would really yeah. appreciate your time and thanks for coming on here today. Oh, my pleasure. If you're not satisfied with your current website or the service you get from your provider, you can switch to websites.ca for free and get a great support team behind you. Just visit websites.ca or email Ryan directly at ryan at websites.ca. Thanks for listening, guys. Catch you next time.